Okay, good evening uh, and welcome to lesson two of the amateur radio training for foundation license. Uh, we're going to go through the technical basics this evening. Uh, this is building on what we did last week um, and introducing some new, new uh, technical elements. Uh, so what we're going, what we're going to do is when the presentation catches up. There we go. We're going to cover uh, units and symbols, uh, voltage, current, resistance, and circuits, uh, conductors and insulators. We're going to go through some mathematical formulas, some very simple ones. Uh, we're going to go back over frequency and wavelength, and we're going to look at uh, what a digital signal looks like in comparison with an analog signal. Uh, so it's those bits, the digital side of it, that aren't really covered in the book that uh, you have, Oliver. They are, um, that's the reason for the new book is they brought in a lot of digital stuff. Um, but we will cover it in these presentations. Okay. So uh, first we need to look at some units of measurement. Um, we'll, we'll start off with some electrical ones. Uh, the first one being the potential difference. Uh, which is also known as voltage. Uh, when you're doing this mathematically, you will uh, you use a capital V to represent voltage. Uh, with, with these symbols, it's very important to remember whether they're capitals or the, the small versions of the, the letters. Um, and with voltage, it's a, a capital. Um, it, the voltage or potential difference is measured in volts. Um, and the unit for a volt is a volt, written as a capital V. Um, that is the, in, in this list, that is the only one where the unit symbol matches the mathematical symbol. Um, again, current, the, the symbol for current is I, uh, a capital I, uh, but it's measured in amps, um, to which the, the unit symbol is A, or amps. Uh, resistance, again, capital R, measured in ohms, but this time we use the, uh, the Greek letter uh, omega uh, to represent ohms. Uh, we will cover resistance within this presentation, uh, as well as the other, uh, the other units that we're using. Um, power is a capital P, measured in watts. Uh, the unit uh, symbol is capital W. Frequency, the mathematical symbol, is a little f. Uh, it's measured in hertz, um, which the unit symbol is a capital H with a little z or z next to it. The uh, mathematical symbol for wavelength is uh, the Greek letter lambda. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I always, always stumble with that one, uh, lambda. Uh, its wavelength is measured in meters, and the unit symbol is a little m. Okay. When we talk about um, large and small units, you, very often if you're looking at, uh, say, distance, you might you you wouldn't necessarily measure the distance from here to Yeovil in meters, you would use kilometers. Uh, we have a, uh, the same system, or part of the same system we use in um, electronics and radio. Uh, the, the smallest uh, measurement is the micro, which is one millionth of a, a given figure. Okay, and the prefix is uh, that funny little U, which the name of which has just escaped me. Um, Martin, I don't if you're still there, what's the name of that symbol? Mu, I believe. Mu, yes, of course it is. Thank you. Um, it's a mu. Uh, so that would say that if we have uh, one millivolt, uh, that is a thousand uh, microvolts. Uh, again, moving up a level, so the, the thousandth, the one thousandth or the milli is 0 0.01 of a given unit. 
the prefix for it is a little m. Uh, so one millivolt is the same as 0 0.001 of a volt. You then have your, uh, your base uh, unit. Okay, so you might have one watt, one volt, one ohm. Uh, and then from there on, we build up rather than going smaller than that unit. Um, so we'll have a kilo. Uh, in this case, we have a kilo ohm. Um, or 1,000 ohms, or in the example given, it's uh, 2,000 ohms or 2 kilo ohms. The, uh, the prefix symbol for it is a small k. Uh, mega is the next one. That is 1 million of your units. The prefix is a capital M, uh, which now you might be able to see the reason why we have uh, the difference between the little m's, the big m's, the little k's, the big k's, is so that we understand the difference between milli and mega. Uh, put the wrong symbol in and you've got the wrong figure in your calculation. Uh, the example given here is three megahertz, uh, which is three million hertz. And then we move up to giga. You may, if you know anything about IT, uh, and computers, you'll notice that some of these are, are transferable over to um, computing with uh, kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, etc. Um, so giga is 1,000 million. Its prefix is a capital G. So 2.4 gigahertz is 2,400 megahertz. We're all clear. We're happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. So <clears throat> we're now going to move on to. So I'm rattling through this because we haven't got a huge amount of time on Zoom. So I apologise if I'm going quickly. Um, so here we have uh, some electrical symbols. Uh, these are used to make up diagrams of uh, electric electrical circuits. Um, so we have on the top left we have a cell. Okay, over here. And you need two cells to make a battery. You'll notice on the battery, we've got a long line, then a short line, and then a long line, and then a short line. The same on the cell, we have a long line and a short line. The long line shows the positive uh, side of the cell, and the short line shows the negative. In the battery, we have two of these popped together. Okay, again, the long line at this end shows the positive side, and because we have a short line at this side, that shows the negative side. We also have a lamp or a bulb, okay, which is a circle with an X in it. The next one we have is an LED, or a light-emitting diode. Uh, it's important that we realize that it has these two arrows here. If those two arrows are not there, it is not an LED, it is a diode. Next, we have the, um, a microphone, then a speaker, antenna, the earth system, uh, or, or a, an earth, uh, a resistor, a switch, and a fuse. Note the difference between the resistor and the fuse. The fuse has the thick line going all the way through it. That makes, uh, obviously, if you miss that line out, uh, you will be marking a resistor rather than a fuse, and vice versa. <coughs> Good evening, Richard. Hello. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. There you no, go. no, you're, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, so moving back to, or moving on to current, if you imagine you've got an electrical wire, um, that wire is made of uh, a, um, a material that uh, electricity can pass through, a conductive material and electrons um, flow, or which are part of that wire, but they flow through that cable. Um, <clears throat> imagine it a bit like a water pipe uh, where the water flows through it. The larger the water pipe, the more water can flow through it. It's the same with an electrical cable. The thicker the cable, 
the more electrons can flow through it, so it can ha uh, handle a higher current uh, than uh, a smaller wire, smaller gauge wire. Do remember, keep in mind that the current is always measured in amps. Okay, so conductors and insulators. <clears throat> A conductor allows electrons to flow easily. An insulator does not. Um, so there's actually some, some quite good conductors on this list. We've got copper, brass, silver and gold and carbon. Uh, they will all conduct electricity. Um, hence, you get a lot of wires made out of copper. You get a lot of components that are, um, uh, have either, are either made of gold or have a gold coating. Um, but then on the opposite side, you've got insulators like plastics, wood, rubber, glass, and ceramics. Um, these ceramics, particularly in glass, are used in a lot of uh, components for amateur or for electronics um, because they are very, very good insulators, uh, as are plastics. Wood, not so much anymore. Uh, what I have seen uh, some older, you, I mean, you may have seen old fashioned radios, they were made of wood as their case. Um, but uh, they're not, not used so much anymore. Uh, there is a safety note at the bottom of this slide that says that water is a conductor. Water is an incredible conductor. Um, the problem with water is it goes everywhere. So you don't necessarily know and, and also it's uh, opaque, so you don't necessarily know where it is. Um, and if water gets on an insulator, uh, it can um, give the appearance that insulator is no longer insulating, because if it coats it, it will still conduct electricity through the water. Uh, so we try, obviously, to keep uh, water and electronics separate. Um, which is a lesson that I was taught from a very young age, as I'm sure we all uh, were as well. Right, on to batteries then. A battery is a combination of cells, usually in series. Um, so uh, as I explained earlier, with the, when we were looking at the symbols, which we have over here, we have each cell, uh, one butted up against the other, uh, creates a battery. It provides electrical energy from a stored chemical energy and has a potential difference that is measured in volts across its terminals. A prime battery is non-rechargeable. Once discharged, it must be properly disposed of. Uh, you get a lot of things like AA, AAA batteries um, that aren't rechargeable. They are known as primary cells and they're fairly easy to dispose of. You can normally, there's a like a, a special battery unit in a supermarket um, and, and other shops and places where you can dispose of them. Uh, a secondary battery, however, is rechargeable as it has a reversible chemical process. For example, car batteries, um, leisure batteries, uh, you can recharge those. Some AA and AAA batteries, uh, nine volt batteries can be recharged. Uh, they all count as um, secondary cells. Polarity. A battery has a polarity, positive and negative, and it must be connected the right way around. Some components, like a simple filament lamp, uh, have no plus or minus and can be connected either way around. But uh, the more complicated your circuit, um, which most of the time means anything more than a filament bulb, um, and it's crucial that those, uh, the polarity of your battery uh, or power supply is connected the correct way around. Uh, otherwise, if you incorrectly connect it uh, to the wrong polarity, uh, you may cause damage to your equipment, um, which I have done by accident a couple of times or more. Um, but uh, yeah, you, you must make sure it's the right way around, otherwise you can, can cause severe damage. Okay, so we're gonna look at some circuits now. Uh, these are the circuit diagrams I mentioned earlier. 
Um, so we have at the top here, we have our battery uh, consisting of two cells. Please note again that the long part of the battery or cell is the positive and the shorter parts are the negative side. Energy will flow out of the cell uh, through the electrons around the circuit into our bulb, out the other side of the bulb and back round into the negative. A circuit will include a source of electrical energy, such as our battery. It will also, or should, um, also have a, another element to it. Uh, otherwise, you're just shorting the battery out, which is very, very dangerous. Okay, so direct current. Um, a battery, uh, like the one in this circuit, uh, provides direct current in volts. Um, the current flows in one direction from the battery to the lamp and then back to the battery again. And just a reminder that sometimes the voltage is termed as a potential difference. Alternating current um, is the same sort of current that comes from mains voltage. Uh, the UK mains voltage is 230 volts. And the way it works is uh, it oscillates between positive and negative um, and at 230 volts uh, in the UK the oscillation is 50 Hertz that means it alternates 50 times every second <clears throat> and you can see a representation here of how um, the the power uh, alternates from positive to negative over time okay so if that time along there is one second, this will, there'll be 50 of these uh, oscillations. Right, we're gonna move on to some formulas now, some mathematical formulas. And the first one we're gonna look at is uh, power. Um, these triangles that are appearing on these slides are an excellent way to remember these formulas. Uh, they're very simple to use. Um, in the amateur radio exam, you'll be given two values and asked to calculate the third. The, the way to use this triangle is if you use your thumb to cover up the value that you're after, uh, and then you've got the last two remaining ones. And so for instance, <clears throat> we, over here we have um, the way the formula works. So power equals voltage times, um, <coughs> uh, times current, do it, excuse me. Uh, so power equals voltage times current. So if you're after power, you would put your thumb over the P and that shows that you have to uh, times voltage by current. If you're after the voltage, it's power divided by current. So you would put your thumb over the voltage and you can see there that that is power over current. And the same with current equals uh, power divided by voltage. So you put your thumb over the, uh, the current and divide the power by the voltage. So we have an example on this slide. Um, we have uh, a 60 watt speaker that runs on a 12 volt battery. What is the current? So we know what the, um, the voltage is. It's a 12 volt battery. So, and we know what the, uh, the power is. It's 60 watts. Um, I do apologize, I've had a... Did anyone else see the little message that came up then? Yes. No. No? Yes, the meeting, the meeting has been upgraded by the host and now includes unlimited minutes. Oh, brilliant. Okay, so you've got my acceptance. Thank you. Okay, so we've got, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got a 60 watt speaker runs on 12 volts. So we know what the power is, we know what the, um, the voltage is. So we want to know what the, the current is. So we put our thumb over the, the I, okay, for current. Um, and we now know that we've got to divide the power by the voltage. 60 watts divided by 12 volts is five amps. 
again, uh, in your exam, you'll be given the two uh, bits of information. So you'll be given, for instance, the 60 watts and the 12 volts, um, and you will be asked to calculate uh, the remaining uh, uh, symbol. And now the presentation is not working. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> moving on to resistors. Resistors limit or oppose the flow of current. Uh, again, imagine you've got a, a water pipe with water flowing down it, and you put a, um, a valve in the middle of it that you can um, turn so that it restricts the flow of water. That is essentially what a resistor is doing. It's um, reducing the flow of the current, but it's doing that by um, <clears throat> sort of stopping the current coming through. Um, so in this circuit, uh, a resistor marked as R over here uh, will cause the lamp to be dimmer, which means it has a low resistance. But if the light doesn't come on at all, okay, that means it's got a high resistance. So it's stopping the current flow almost entirely to the lamp. The current through a resistor so results in a conversion of electrical energy into heat in the resistor. So if you've got um, a, a high resistance resistor, uh, you're going to end up with more heat than a lower resistance uh, resistor. Yes. So with resistance, we have another triangle. This one's called Ohm's law. Uh, and it's exactly the same principle. Um, but this time we have voltage, we have current, <coughs> and we have resistance. So it's exactly this, it works exactly the same way uh, with this example. Um, you have uh, a radio has a resistance of 24 ohms and needs a current of 0 0.5 amps. What's the voltage? So we want the voltage, so we cover the V up with our thumb and we end up with I times R. Uh, so we have 0 0.5 times 24 is 12. So we know that the voltage of the radio is 12 volts. Again, you'll be given two values in your exam and asked to calculate the third. Right, we're now going to look at series and parallel circuits. So, <clears throat> when we're looking at a series circuit, okay, we have the current will leave the battery and it will pass through one lamp before it passes through the other lamp and um, before it comes back round. The voltage required for the circuit is the sum of the individual voltages across the lamp. That means if we have a lamp here that is 5 volts and a lamp here that is 5 volts, we have a circuit of 10 volts or so a requirement of 10 volts from the circuit. However, when these lamps are in parallel, as they are shown in the bottom diagram, we have um, and again, we have five volts here and five volts here. Um, we have the current getting divided at this point and traveling through the circuit. And the total um, value of this circuit is five volts because that is all it needs for it to pass through each lamp. Um, the One of the uh, benefits to this system, or not benefits, but if one bulb goes, uh, blows or goes out in this circuit, the other bulb will carry on. In a series circuit, that won't happen. If one bulb blows, then the whole circuit goes dead. So let's assume that uh, each lamp is the same and they need three volts to light up. Battery voltage required for a series circuit is six volts because it's two lots of three. And if one lamp blows, the circuit breaks. In parallel, however, the battery voltage required is only three volts because the current is halved across two lamps. 
If one lamp blows, the other lamp will still light up. Okay, current in parallel circuits. If you're new to parallel circuits, this can be confusing. It may help to think of the electric current like water, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, if the current flows through two equal paths, the water flow is divided in half. Here is the same circuit drawn in a different way to demonstrate the current being divided across two lamps. So if you imagine this again as water, the water flows out of the battery down and then gets divided into two, goes across both lamps and then rejoins and comes out the other side. It means you only need two amps to power each lamp, meaning the whole circuit needs four amps. Okay, we're going to go on to digital signals now. So analog signals are uh, constantly changing in their amplitude and frequency or both. Uh, digital signals are a stream of finite values at a specific sampling interval. I'll show you what that means in a moment. The digital signals are better at overcoming noise and require a computer processor and suitable software. Uh, at some point, I will create a video um, showing some of this software working. Okay, so analog to digital conversion. Uh, digital signals are processed by a computing device. An analog to digital converter, or an ADC, samples an analog signal and produces a digital representation of it. So here we have the analog signal. Okay, it's just a standard sine wave. When it gets converted by the ADC, um, you'll notice that uh, it becomes a very square looking wave. And this is represented underneath by the zeros and ones. So where there is a one in digital code, the uh, the wave is at the top of its peak, and when it's a zero, it's at the bottom. <clears throat> it looks very much, if you were to see a sine wave um, uh, represented for uh, CW mode or Morse code, uh, it looks very, very similar to this. Okay, uh, because it is either on or off. So zero, one, or off and on, off, off, on, which essentially is what digital code is. Uh, a digital to analog converter, or a DAC, represents a digital signal in an analog format. So again, the same piece of code is then trans uh, transferred back into a analog wave. We're now going to go back over what we did last week uh, with frequency and wavelength. Uh, we're going to do this quite briefly. Um, so the frequency is represented as a sine wave, um, which can be generated by an oscillator. An oscillator is a small circuit within a radio that produces um, the radio wave. Okay. That, but uh, a wave can also be produced uh, in other means as well, not necessarily just for radio. Light is uh, transmitted as a wave, um, as is audio frequency. Uh, so as I'm talking, I'm creating audio waves that look very, very similar uh, when drawn to a, a radio wave. Uh, parts of the wave. So <clears throat> from this point through here to this point, that distance is the wavelength. Uh, this distance between this line and the top of the peak, or this line and the bottom of a trough, is ooh, sorry, is um, the amplitude. Uh, and the frequency is the number of that section there, that the wave, one wave, passes a point in uh, a second. So if it's um, say one hertz, you're having one cycle, one of these here per second. Uh, last week we did mention that the, um, the ratio between the frequency and wavelength um, is uh, relative. So the greater 
the wavelength, the lower the frequency, and the lower the or the higher the frequency, the shorter the wavelength. Uh, this table does allow you to calculate uh, what is uh, what the frequency is compared to the wavelength. So if you're working on say 100 uh, megahertz, you find the 100 mark along here, you come up to the thick line in the center and across, and you'll see that we're on about uh, three and a half meters. Uh, a copy of this table will be provided in your exam for you to use uh, to calculate the, the different uh, wavelengths and frequencies with the information given. Okay, so we're going to quickly just go back over some things. Uh, the, the mains uh, power frequency in the UK is 50 hertz. Uh, audio frequency, so that's the, the human hearing range, uh, is between 20 and 15,000 hertz. And the audio communication range, which is well within the human hearing range, is 300 hertz to 3,000 hertz. Radio frequencies, by contrast, um, are in the 30 kilohertz uh, to beyond 3,000 megahertz. Uh, and again, we did look at this last week. Um, the HF band is 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz, the VHF 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz, and the UHF to 300 megahertz to 3000 megahertz. Uh, all these values are examinable, i.e. you do need to know these for the exam. In summary then, uh, we've gone over units and symbols. Uh, we've learnt uh, the units and their prefixes. Uh, we can recognise symbols within an electrical circuit. Uh, we have covered uh, alternating current and direct current, uh, as well as series and parallel circuits. We've looked over the formulas for Ohm's law and power, i.e. Uh, power equals volts time times current and volts equals current times resistance. We've had a brief look at digital to analog conversion uh, and we have gone back over frequency versus wavelength. Uh, and please do remember as the frequency rises, the wavelength reduces and vice versa.